So Valve decided to release or announce a bunch of hardware today. And I got tagged about this a week ago and, and it's been building up. I guess we're, when there was smoke, there was fire. I felt like this was going to be a, a real thing around uh, the weekend when I, that's when I felt like it was going to be. So I was like uh, anticipating this uh, to actually exist. And I have already taken a look at all the different videos that have come out. And there are a few things that I want to talk about. Gamers Nexus had some pretty good information that I want to share in here and talk about because I feel like it got buried a little bit in his 45 minute video. There's a lot of good stuff there. I would still suggest checking it out. Linus Tech Tips did a really good video, especially with his own personal uh, uh, experience with the Steam Frame specifically and using what I consider to be the secret sauce that not enough people are talking about. Even though Linus Tech Tips really did lean hard on it, I want to further iterate on that saying that the foveated streaming is 100% the secret sauce to the Steam frame. I want to talk about what our expectations are for the price and contextualize what all this stuff means. So if we take a look at the Steam frame and kind of decouple the specs, it's actually very similar to what the Quest 3 is, generally speaking, like 110 degrees uh, FO, FOV. The resolution is a bit better on the Steam frame, just a bit over what the Quest 3 is. However, we do have eye tracking on the frame, and we also have that pretty beefy chipset on there with 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM. So we have the Quest 3, which is $500. I would personally think that the Steam frame is going to be as little as $700 and possibly $800. That's where I am feeling the price for the Steam frame is going to land, especially with that included dongle. That included dongle is huge. Don't discount that because I feel like that is actually really big. So the $200 to $300 added cost on the Steam frame over the Quest 3, I think is going to be self-evident when you actually are, are using it in practice with a host computer. So first, let's talk about what I consider the secret sauce. That is the foveated streaming. Um, and it, when I talked about the secret sauce for the Steam Deck being Gamescope previously, it's along the same lines, right? Like there is a, a component of this that is going to take this to the next level. And with foveated streaming, it's not really a hard concept to understand, just like foveated rendering isn't a hard concept to understand and there is an idea of foveated rendering happening directly on the headset itself, but for games that are natively compiled for that particular chipset, where only where you're looking is going to be where the full resolution is actually happening. The more important point is that Linus Tech Tips actually went over this in great detail with his personal experience using the foveated streaming and said that he was not able to actually detect any problems with that, meaning when he was just moving his eyes around like crazy, he wasn't able to see any particular blur, right? Because where you're looking is the only place where you're getting full pixel data. Everything else is quantized in some in some respects. So it'll be kind of blurry everything around you and only focus where you are. Because that's how our eyes actually work. We only have full resolution detail where we're pinpointing our eyes and everything around there can be a little bit blurry without us actually noticing. So that's a thing that they leverage and Valve themselves say that using this foveated streaming, which can happen outside of any games, it's just what the system can do for everything. What that means is that they they say it's a 10x compression layer effectively, meaning that they're for the bitstream that they're sending, they're getting a 10x increase in what they're able to do uh, effectively, which is awesome. And with that included Wi-Fi 7 uh, receiver, which will kind of decouple everything else, you don't have to worry about your router, you can just have a direct connection with the headset. That's super awesome. Like th that package itself will, you know, obviously it doesn't need the Steam machine, which we'll talk about in a second. But having that means that we kind of make the whole process of running PC games either in, in flat mode or in VR far easier. And being wireless is is a killer feature. I don't like using VR with a wired uh, strap anymore since I've had the Quest 3 and I've been using wireless. And I actually have my, I put another router near me that has a uh, MIMO, multiple routers. And I have a whole band that I dedicate just for my Quest 3, just to minimize any particular uh, issues that can crop up. So it's it's really important to me, and I'm glad that they have effectively given everybody uh, a case where they can really maximize how well this works. This is a huge feature. Don't discount how awesome this is, please. It's it's actually secret sauce, and it's the biggest news here outside of everything else. There are some interesting bits with the Snapdragon uh, the Snapdragon chipset that's on there. Now, one of the things that was in the Gamers Nexus video 
was that he had said, and I have to re-listen to it because he just said 20 watts. Now, 20 watts, I don't know if that's package or total system power, but effectively what that means is that if it's package power, uh, you're going to probably go balloon up to like 25, 27 watt on total system power. But at 20 watt, the battery that's included there is only basically a 21 watt hour battery, which means that as a worst case scenario, you're going to have one hour to less than one hour of battery life in the default headset. So unless you get a bigger battery, you're not going to have better battery life. And with the current weight and all of everyone's uh, experiences that they have been talking about, talking about how light it is and how comfortable it is, that only applies to the included 21 watt hour battery that's already on the, the headset it, it is, as it is now. So uh, it, it's kind of... I get where they're coming from because they do need to push performance. So this is going to help when we're using that FEX and Proton ARM layer. So FEX is the uh, ISA conversion. So if we're doing uh, x86 and emulating over to ARM so that ARM can run x86 instructions. And then Proton ARM, which includes FEX, is basically the Proton layer, which does the DirectX to uh, Vulkan wrapping. So there's two layers of things that are being converted in there to run on that, that Snapdragon chipset. And more or less when you're running x86 games on standalone headset it has the capability of pushing power pretty hard and gamers nexus talked about the the heat pipe and the thermal solution on there and it looks like with that single fan it looks like it can get pushed pretty hard which means it's going to be a real drag on battery life very fast so don't expect the best battery life when playing pc games that are being emulated and then uh, running through proton to play on this headset while it will be capable that 20 watt number is is good but it's also a uh, limiting in in and of itself so with the emulation on top of it you should really temper your expectations of what the possibilities are the only part that i would say in here is because it has the eye tracking any game that is made for this system has the technical possibility of also having foveated rendering, where instead of doing the foveated streaming you're actually changing how things are resolving in a game in so far as what you're looking at. So that will uh, reduce the impact on the GPU that is on the headset itself, which has value itself. So there's lots of cool stuff and I really wanna just talk about that specifically. There's lots of other videos that go for like 40 minutes, 50 minutes, and they talk about it in greater detail. I just wanted to specifically mention this point because I think it's those points because I think they kind of got lost. Uh, even though Linus Tech Tips did a really great job of talking about his experience with the foveated streaming. And I just wanted to kind of reiterate that, that I think it's a great thing. For the Steam Machine itself, my expected price for the Steam Machine is around $400, $500. Um, it's a pretty small box. I would say that anticipate anywhere around PS5 type of performance with uh, the capability of having a better a better frame rate. Uh, what's interesting about that is that the GPDG1 that I have here with Oculink, uh, with Oculink, I can directly connect through PCIe. This is the 7600 MXT, which is 32 CU, 8 gigabytes of GDR6, um, it, pretty similar to what the Steam Machine is going to be. And with the uh, AMD Smart Memory Access, I can enable that on a 7840U laptop, uh, not park two cores, so I can have six cores of Zen 4, cap that at, at 30 watt, and I can reasonably give you a good idea with Bazite of how good this Steam Machine will be in practice. And I can take some benchmarks, what I have now, and kind of see what happens when it comes out proper. But I think I'll make a video of that shortly, just showing off some games so that we have a good idea of what the Steam Machine will be capable of. The 8 gigabyte side is a little limiting, especially now. And I think a lot of people recognize that. So when this releases, again, this is going to be coming out in 2026. It's going to be fairly limiting, especially as time goes on. It's a bit interesting. I, I, I don't want to say it's, it's a, a negative thing because you can always tune things down, right? You can always take settings down. You don't have to push them harder. Pushing the harder will stress that VRAM very rapidly. So you're going to have to make sure that you always kind of keep things in line. And specifically, developers that are making PC builds will have to have a preset that say, oh, is this a Steam Deck? Is this a Steam Machine? Which one do you have? And kind of dial in settings for you automatically, which you're starting to see more of, right? Like you can just do handheld settings, uh, generally speaking, and just be like, okay, I'm off. Or even just the Steam Deck preset on a lot of different things. And just use that as your default when playing, even though you'll be able to use larger resolutions and not be 
you won't necessarily have to be stuck in 720p. You can do 1080p as your base resolution, then upscale. And that's really going to be where you're looking at it for that. So anticipate anywhere between like $400 and $500 for that. I think that original $1,200 bundle price, which includes the Steam controller too, um, it sounds like it's it's going to be off the mark now, especially with all the externalities that are going on with, with costs of things lately. Memory prices have been increasing. Um, so there's lots of things that are happening that are going to be making things more expensive. So perhaps that $1,200 rumored bundled price is going to be bumping up a bit, maybe a little bit higher, or maybe they can somehow magically keep that down. We have, well, it remains to be seen where that's going to come. But I mean, effectively, if you take a look at Steam Machine and my expected prices for what they are, that's around $1,200 minus the Steam controller. So maybe they're just kicking in the Steam controller in there in the bundle fee. So you basically get that for free. That's where that $1,200 price kind of happens. Um, but prices have increased. I don't know if Valve is just going to swallow those costs or it's just going to get tacked on. Likely it's going to get tacked on. So $1,200 seems to be the minimum type of bundle price. Maybe expect like $1,300 or $1,400 as a, as a general price, but anywhere in that range, right? $1,200 to $1,400 as a generality for the bundle of all three is where I think where we are. That's a quick video that I wanted to make on my current um, perception of where things are. I am super interested in the Steam frame. I cannot wait to pre-order myself, which looks like it's going to be in 2026. So that's just a quick video. Hopefully this video was informative. Thank you very much to my YouTube channel members as well as my Patreon members. Your support really means the world to me, guys. I hope this video was informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.